Hi there everyone, we're back at the Royal Astronomical Society. I'm here with Sheila. Sheila, you actually visit lots of schools talking to young people about space and astronomy yeah. and you like comets, don't you? I love comets, yeah. We make comets with schools. How do you make a comet? <laughs> lots of dry ice and lots of imagination. Do you like throw them around and all that sort <laughs> no, of thing? Or? That's the one thing they wish that I did and I don't do. <laughs> okay, well when it comes to awesome pictures of comets and old <laughs> stuff, because we like old stuff here on Objectivity, it's hard to go past this. We have a big name in astronomy there, Hevelius. This is Cometographia? How would you say that? I'd say Cometographia. Cometographia? <laughs> I don't know if that's right. However you say it, it's a bit of a big deal and we're going to take a look inside and we're going to show you some great pictures of comets, then we're going to show you some even better pictures of comets, <laughs> and then we're going to tell you an amazing mystery, and then we're going to kind of solve the mystery. That's a lot of stuff for one so video, exciting. so we better get on with it. <laughs> All right, let's remove these gloves. Here we go. Johannes Hevelius. Got a nice little title page there. They didn't really plan ahead there, did they? They sort of started <laughs> writing it and then they ran out of space. But anyway, okay, here we go. Have a look at these. What are your thoughts on those ones, Sheila? You like them? I really like them. And I was thinking that the reason that I really like them is because the word comet comes from the ancient Greek kometes, which means hairy star. And you can kind of see why the ancient astronomers would have called comets comets because in the drawings they do look like hairy stars. They do look proper hairy. <laughs> so how would he have been looking at these comets? Is this naked eye or did he have telescopes, Hevelius? Or? He used both. So he was one of the last astronomers not to use a telescope, but he also had a big telescope. He owned three houses and he had an observatory on the top of the three houses that he called a star castle. Star and castle. he had Polish uh, kings and queens that came to visit. All right. So along with these kind of hairy artistic pictures, <laughs> we also get a few more sort of technical things, aren't we? Mm. So, well, here we see tails. Point. What can we see about the pointing here of the yeah, tail? Yeah, so you can see that the tail's always pointing away from the sun, so as the comet moves, the direction of the tail changes as well. That's shown really nicely there. Yeah, it's a really good picture, that. So if you like that, wait till you see what we've got over here. Come and have a look at this. This is even better. <laughs> we've got some works of art here. What's this says here? Donati's Comet. What's mm -hmm. going on here? Donati was an Italian astronomer. There was a comet in 1858 which was seen by so many people but named after Donati. It was kind of a big deal, it this comet. We, we were yeah. reading before. <laughs> everyone, everyone who was saw a, it, yeah. Uh, apparently <laughs> Abraham Lincoln looked at this comet. Have a look at that. I mean, that's gorgeous, isn't it? Lovely yeah, blue. Beautiful. This is from September 11, 1858. This is number one in the series. Mm -hmm. And we see a name here, J. Henry Griesbach. We were talking before about the Hevelius drawings and how almost fantastical they were, but these are really accurate and you can see asterisms and constellations, how they would have been. So you can notice the plough there. I think that should be. Well, it looks like the plough anyway. It does, yeah, <laughs> it does. And we know that Griesbach was very accurate because we've been able to go back in time using mm -hmm. software and this is exactly where the stars yeah, were and the comet completely was. completely accurate. So uh, he was obviously a stickler for detail. This is October 16, 1858. We're a little bit out of order here, I'm afraid, but that's my fault for the way I've put them here. But you get the idea. Again, we've got this big sweeping, curving tail. It must have been amazing to look at this. It must have been quite glorious. I saw um, Hale Bop in the 1990s, and that was amazing, but this looks even better. Did you, uh, were you tempted to get out your, your, your watercolours or your oils <laughs> and uh, put something together? I can't draw for toffee, and actually I wasn't, into space at that point of my life. So I liked looking at the comet, but I didn't even have a telescope or anything. Maybe that was like a turning point <laughs> for It could have been, yeah, it yeah. could have been. <laughs> oh, this one wow. here is nice, it's a lot. That's beautiful. This is October 2nd, 1858. The tail is not quite as big on this one. September 25th, 1858. I like the little bit of like uh, <laughs> I, wonder if, I wonder if that's accurate. I don't know. He seems like a details guy. I reckon mm. it probably is right. And last but not least, Oh, wow. No, definitely not, least. That's great. Would you put one of them up in the lounge room if... Uh, oh, yes. Can yeah. I, please? <laughs> yeah. Now, we said here, J. Henry Griesbach is the name signed on these. This was a bit of a mystery to you and I earlier. I'm not going to lie. We were going on Google. We were trying to figure out who J. Henry Griesbach was, and we weren't having a lot of luck. But Sean, the librarian here, told us he actually also has some sunspot pictures downstairs. But have a look at this. When the book arrived, not only... Did we get some great pictures of sunspots, which I'll show you quickly now. They're quite nice ones, aren't they? They're quite detailed. Mm. So we've got some day after day. This is 1857. So you did say he was a, a details man, and you can see that in the sunspot pictures. Definitely. But most unexpectedly, at the front of the book, all was revealed <laughs> about our mystery artist as well. 
because have a look at this. Here on the front page it says, figures of the solar spots from July 1850, place of observation, Maida Vale, London, by J. Henry Griesbach. But someone <laughs> from the past has very helpfully put something after that. What does this say here? It says that J. Henry Griesbach is the nephew of Sir William Herschel. <laughs> there you go. Nephew of Sir William Herschel, probably, well, the greatest British astronomer, maybe? And, oh. and very special to us, being the first president of the Royal Astronomical Society. There you go. Kind of a big deal. <laughs> so his nephew was the person doing these. We were going to say, we don't know who we're this mystery know. painter is, but we solved it. We know who it is. Nephew of William Herschel. Support for Objectivity comes from 23andMe, a personalised genetic service that helps you learn what the 23 chromosomes that make up your DNA can tell you about your ancestry, traits and health. To help with scientific research and discoveries and find out your personal DNA story, go to 23andMe.com objectivity.